We are in Prim, Nevada, just outside of beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, where the best in the off-road truck racing business are ready to do battle on this awesomely prepared track in their 900 horsepower, fire-breathing dragons. This year, 30 million people will make the trek to this barren wasteland in the Nevada desert for one thing, to hedge a bet in the high stakes game of risk versus reward. They'll put everything on the line for a chance and a dream. These risk takers, they're chasing a dream of their own, but to achieve it, they need to go all in. One wrong move and they'll find themselves flipping end over end. One hesitation could mean complete failure. One miscalculation and the dream they're chasing could simply slip away. Only the fearless will accept this challenge. Not because it's easy, but because it's hard. Not because it's safe, but because the reward outweighs the risk. The road less traveled is less traveled for a reason. Stick around to see what makes these warriors battle for their place in history. Three races, one chance at glory. No looking back. Torque, the off-road championship begins now. Welcome everyone to Prim Nevada for the duel in the desert. The 2014 kickoff to Torque, the off-road championship. Already been through round one, today we're looking forward to round two. I'm Tess Sewell along with Grant Langston and Grant, We've already seen a ton of action here with the thrills and spills of round one. Round one did not disappoint. We did see a lot of action. First, the big one. Ari Leindijk Jr. goes for a wild ride, goes end over end. He went to the hospital with a broken collarbone, but we'll hear from him later today. In the pro lights, up the inside, Bradley Morris goes in and he bicycles around that turn, barely keeps it on all four. And behind him, you see the traffic jam starting, trucks going everywhere, spinning out. A lot of guys in this pro lights. And then Johnny Greaves, our reigning pro four champion, he comes up for the lead up the inside and he overdrives it and flips over. Adrian Cheney gets held up. And finally, we see Mark Jenkins getting helped over by Mark Kwame. Jenkins not very happy about that. He had a few words to say about that afterwards. And we can promise you plenty more action just like this here in round two today. Obviously though, to flip that many times in one of these trucks and survive it means this is not the truck that you drive at home. And for more on that, let's head over to Tony Bachhoven. Tony. Well, Grant and Tess, there are a lot of differences. If you buy them off the showroom floor with a V8 Hemi, 395 horsepower. But if you get yourself a Torque Pro 2 truck, 750 to 900 horsepower out of a naturally aspirated V8 engine. Engine placement is different too. Look how far back it is. It's located about in the dash area of your passenger truck. This truck with the driver weighs about 4,000 pounds. Your passenger truck, about 4,600. Now, the two significant differences here, first of all, the tires. Look at these big racing hand groove tires on the back of this Pro 2. The other is shock travel, about eight and a half inches on your family truck. On this truck, 18 inches on the front, and take a look at this big shock on the back, 22 inches of travel. Now, if I'm going out on the racetrack today, lining up next to CJ Greaves, I want to be in this truck right here. Uh, thanks, Tony, and look at the comparisons here between this is not your truck and the garage at home, folks. And you know that there's a lot more differences, things like there are no review mirrors. You have to rely on your spotter, and the biggest thing, vision. You have what looks like a barbecue grate as a windshield because of these massive rocks that get pelted at you. Well, we have a full day of action here in Prim today. Three classes of racing, and some drivers are actually going to race more than one class, and one of those drivers is right now down with our very own Christy Lee. Thanks, Tesh. CJ Greaves in the number 33 Monster Energy Toyota contesting both the Pro Lates and the Pro 2 Series this season. Had a tough start to the year in round one here in Pro 2. Definitely some mechanical difficulties out there, but you found success in Pro Lights with a victory. Congratulations. How do you plan to carry that into round two today? Yeah, you know, we had a fast truck last year. We came out here to Prim, and uh, we are two for two, won both days. So came out qualifying, broke, went out in the race, broke again. So went out and practiced this morning at the fast lap by half a second. Pro Light's been good all weekend, fast qualifier, uh, won the race. So we're just hopefully going to keep the momentum going and keep moving forward. 
Well, the big question here, can C.J. Greaves carry on that performance and get the win again in pro light? Well, we'll find out when we come back. The young guns of pro light are ready to do battle in prim. Torque, the off-road championship on NBCSN, is brought to you by Amsoil. For any engine, buy now at Amsoil.com. By Traxxas, the fastest name in radio control, with over 50 ready-to-race models to choose from. Starting under $200, it's affordable family fun from Traxxas. And by Cooper Tires, an official partner of the Torque series. Welcome back, everyone, to Prim, Nevada, where we are getting ready for the roller coaster ride of Torque Round 2. The Pro Lights are already out on the track, rolling, getting ready for our start. And let's take a look at the top of your screen, our starting grid. And Grant, this is an inverted start. The top six from yesterday get inverted. Exactly that. And then. Keegan Kincaid, our defending champion, just missed out on that, but the top six being reversed as we look at the truck specifications. The big thing to look at, the weight. These trucks are a lot lighter. Yes, they have a little less travel and suspension, a little less horsepower, but these guys carry their momentum, and with that difference in the weight, these guys are all in the mail today. And certainly we saw some absolutely wild racing here in round one in Prim yesterday, and one of those wild rides happened to Jarrett Brooks in the number 77 truck. Take a look at what happened to Jarrett Brooks in the middle of the race. His windshield is obstructed by his hood. His hood is all up in his face. Look at him going through these groups, just not scared, but finally you can see that rips off and he gets a clear vision again and he still manages to put it on the podium. Yeah, great run there for Jarrett Brooks. Hangs on and takes a third place, so he is definitely in contention today. Speaking of contention, there is the seven of Keegan Kincaid. Had a rough day yesterday, and for more about that, let's check in with Tony Bachhoven. You're right, guys. He did have a rough day yesterday. As Grant mentioned, he missed the invert by one spot in the Pro Lights, they invert six. So when I was talking to Keegan moments before he went on the track, he starts inside of row number four today, which isn't all that bad. His concern are the conditions. The sun beating down on the racetrack and this strong wind will dry the course out. He's not sure if there'll be enough track for him to make his way toward the front. And with that many trucks on this track and the wind playing a big effect, we, uh, we know how it can dry out on board right now with the number 44, Brad Lovell. I love this shot, Grant. You really get to see how the racing stacks up behind. You do. It, it's a little intimidating seeing all these guys. It's almost better to look forward as a racer. And here we go, rolling round to the green flag. Ryan Beat will lead them out to that green flag. And they're allowed to start anytime now. Here we go, green racing in Prim. You see guys already starting to move around a little bit. This track a little bit wet in the beginning, so it'll be slick. You'll see some guys trying different lines and basically staying out of the roost. And it's all, seems like first turn, not wow, that, that chaotic. Actually <laughs> very impressive out of turn oh. one and coming into this whoop section, which just throws you yeah. all over the place. Great start though for beat in that black truck. He is oh. hanging on to that lead position. Oh, a turnaround right there. Doug Maytag in the 81. He does a nice little pirouette and off he goes. Lost a couple of positions. No harm, no foul. Maytag had such a great race yesterday, but not so good to start for him today. Ryan Pete, though, guy who came from the two-wheel sport of motocross, finding his groovy on the trucks, going over that catapult jump the first time. I mean, these guys are absolutely flying almost 200 feet by the time they land near the base of the bottom, and beautiful speedway style through the slough sweeper. Back over that start finish line, you can see the green flag Raven beat is holding off Kyle Hart. You see the black truck, 
in the lead. The red and white truck, oh, and Hart goes wide. And up the inside, Jared Brooks, and he takes over second place with a beautiful pass up the inside. No contact, no bumping. That's how you want to do it. Now, all he has to do is set his sights on that truck that's out in front, the number 51 of Ryan B. Hart went a little sideways there and coming into that turn, so he is just going to have to pull it back together, Grant, really focus. He looked good to start with, but I think got a little bit wide. Well, let's, let's see what he can do now that he can actually have vision for the whole race. He's right there, and we still have a lot of racing to go. But meanwhile, Ryan Beat leading them out from the start, doing a really good job at trying to hold everybody off. But it looked there like Jared Brooks is taking a look, trying to get past Beat on the jump. Oh, contact. Side by side. Brooks has the inside. Beat goes wide. Let's see how these oh, guys come out. Looks like he's got it. Jared Brooks now takes the lead. Ryan Beat had to stay, you know, leave that inside open and hope to carry that momentum. Well, Ryan Beat now drops down to second. And Tony, you've got more in Ryan for us? Well, Ryan told me right before the race, his concern with his first visit here to Prim was working through that mogul section. He said it's so important to get into that section properly so that you can maintain your way through the rest of those jumps to set yourself up for that right-hand turn. And he couldn't have said it any better. It is so true. The way these trucks are, you come in, they do get a little unsettled. And if it starts swapping, you're pretty much just along for the ride trying to correct it. So Jarrett Brooks, the number seven, 77, currently in the lead. We saw just before the race, we had the, the shots from yesterday where literally his entire hood just obscured his vision, and he still managed to push himself forward. But look, he's putting a little pressure on the back here. A kid I actually know pretty well, Bradley Morris, in that orange and black K&N track. He is hanging on the back of this group as he's already having a look up the inside. They come out, I think he just got around our defending champion of Keegan Kincaid and a beautiful pass there. And now he's got CJ Greaves right in front of him. So Kincaid, the number seven Traxxas machine, the black 33 monster machine, that is CJ Greaves who won yesterday's round one. And CJ is always a threat in any race he's in. Well, this kid has so much talent and potential and sometimes seen a little bit of checkers or wreckers with him but he's 18 years old this guy is maturing he is a phenomenal driver and a lot of times if he doesn't break the truck he's got a shot at winning or you you almost expect him to be up front as we see this battle now these guys now venturing look at that kind of the up and under the slide job cut underneath diamond in the corner side by side and I saw Kyle Hart look like he had trouble and then suddenly tucked it inside and underneath. So he is challenging Kincaid then to trying to get past Kincaid. Just on three wheels. <laughs> on three wheels. That was full commitment there. Ryan Beat. Hopefully he doesn't have any idea of what's going on behind him because all the heavy wow. hitters are arriving. And look at this. Back Where did and CJ forth come go. from? Up the inside came the number 33 of CJ Greaves. He just powered it right into the corner. That was uh, an impressive move. Look here. Oh, Hart looking for the move there to try and get past Beat. Meanwhile, they side by side again, and he will have the inside going to the next turn. Jarrett Brooks, you can see his oh, look at that end right now. Woo that wind definitely starting to play a little bit of a factor here as we see some different line options. Look at this. Hart up the inside. He's going to try this again. They come across the finish line to complete lap six. Excuse me, they're on lap six. And he doesn't. Well, will he hold on to it? The number 41 of Kyle Hart looks like he may have gotten around Ryan Beat. And right behind him, the man in the green and black monster truck dives up the inside again with another late break move. Jared Brooks, number 77, still leading this out, but this battle, the mess for second place there. Kyle Hart, and now CJ Greaves has found his way through. Looks like he is going to hold that third position and chase down Kyle Hart. Well, if you're Kyle Hart, you've got to be a little bit nervous if your spot is telling you CJ's coming up behind because this guy has been on form. He made it look a little easy yesterday, but we know it's not. All these guys are hanging it out. 
one little bobble, you could go from first to fifth or sixth right now. I mean, these guys could almost throw a blanket. Oh, look at CJ getting those front, that front inside wheel up on that inside banking there. As now, at the end of this lap, they will be throwing out the competition caution. We know what that means, Tess. Well, competition caution, the red and yellow flags come out together, and the whole field will be stacked up as they are racing. So very important to get as far forward as you can because you're going to reline up single file and start again. Oh, and Randy Morris now, he's rubbing tires with Brian Beat, who's Brian Beat's going to be just getting a shuffled back. Here we go, Jarrett Brooks coming around the corner now into the competition corner. Red and yellow flags fly. And what this means is that everybody will now stack up nose to tail. And they will come around and will restart this race again where everybody's stacked up. So number 77, Jarrett Brooks is the leader there, but a great run from CJ Greaves. For more on CJ, let's check in with Tony Buckhoven. Well, guys, I'm standing here near the big corner where they come back toward the front straightaway, and one of the biggest differences I've noticed is CJ, when he comes off the jump, he eases back into the throttle. Most of the trucks as they come by me are throttling in and out of the gas, and I think that's what's allowing him to set his truck up much better for exiting in through the middle of that corner, exiting off of turn four there, coming toward the front straightaway. Thanks, Tony. Reached this halfway point where everybody is stacked up in a row. And there we have Jarrett Brooks leading them out. He is in front of Kyle Hart and then CJ Greaves in third, Kincaid in fourth. And they're coming through to the green flag again. Great jump there at the start for Jarrett Brooks and that's 77. Looks like a clean start from everyone so far. Oh, look at oh, these guys. Awesome shot there. See some of the trucks coming over, a little nose in high, a little nose in down. That's to do with how you lift the throttle off the lip as they come with the rollers. And look at these guys, different lines. But we see CJ, he's coming down on the left side of that screen a lot more than everyone else. And he dives up the inside. Did he make a pass? No, he did not. But as he was looking for that pass, Kincaid came up right behind him. You can see the truck with the, the panel hanging off the back. So the Traxxas machine of Kincaid all over the back of that black and green monster Toyota of CJ Greaves. And if you're wondering why Keegan Kincaid has the red background on his number, that's because he is the reigning and defending champion coming into this class. It's a beautiful shot there, I love that one. Oh, and you can see now the dust is starting to pick up. We talked about this with so many trucks on the track. We've got a lot of sun, a lot of wind. It started, even though the guys have been working so hard to prep this track, we really have got a tough time keeping the dust down. You can see this onboard shot shows you just how much dirt is being kicked up. And that's the thing, you know, the problem with these trucks, you were saying, there we go, the fire-breathing dragons. And the roost they shoot and they, the way they just throw so much dirt, they just bake this ground out, polish it, and you get no moisture left. But you know what's great? If you're Jarrett Brooks, <laughs> there's no dust, there's no roost in your face. You've got the easiest, wow, oh, look who's not having an easy time. Keegan. CJ Greaves, Keegan Kincaid is all over the back of Greaves. And right behind them is Bradley Morris, another guy who's just waiting for these guys maybe to get tangled up on a bit of a tussle and he's ready to pounce. But CJ now had, did lose a couple of truck lengths. So not sure if he's maybe protecting that inside which is not allowing him to carry his momentum or possibly just a little mistake. In that and, and as you say, while Kincaid and Greaves are fighting, Bradley Morris, who's our biggest mover, started 16th, already up into that fifth place position. You just let these guys duke it out a little bit and then maybe you find yourself a little opening Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. And all these guys are good. And at this point of the race, we know time is running out. These guys are going to start pushing the envelope for those podium positions and to see who will actually win this race. CJ Greaves there in third place managed to get a little bit of gap on Keegan Kincaid. He's now chasing down that red and white machine of Kyle Hart, but still. Jared Brooks, you see the white truck there on the left-hand side of your screen in the lead and holding that position. What you, were, what you were saying about CJ Greaves, at least when he has a slight gap, he doesn't have to worry about protecting the inside the whole time. So he can run his own racing lines. 
So Keaton Kincaid chasing down CJ Greaves. More on that battle. Let's check in with Tony. Go! Whoa! Well, Kincaid spins around, and you don't get any extra prizes for taking more of a lap. So that is a disaster there for Keegan Kincaid, and that will allow CJ Greaves certainly to put a much bigger gap. Oh! That's not a good sign. Can't see the number, but we see a little bit of smoke. Full course yellow, full course yellow truck on its side, hoping to find out the number. So truck is obviously blocking our course. That means all the yellow flags come out. A full course yellow will again group all of our racers together in that single file. And you see the safety crew is heading out there. We'll try and find out who this racer is. We got a full course yellow here in Pro Lights. This is Torque, the off-road championship for Prim Nevada. Round two continues when we return. Welcome back, everyone, to Torque Round 2 from Prim Nevada. This is the Pro Lights, a full course yellow caused by Bobby Runyon flipping into turn one. And the restart is underway with, again, the 77 of Jarrett Brooks in the lead over Kyle Hart in that red and white 41. And then the black and green monster Toyota of CJ Greaves all over the back of Hart. As we see, once again, CJ coming to the inside. Is he going to run it in deep? Look at that. we got Bradley Morris on the outside. Will these lines cross over? No, CJ plays it smart, holds the inside. Bradley has nowhere to go. All these guys choosing to take that sort of right-hand side, if you're driving, of that split lane to get the drive, to get over some of these bigger jumps. And the orange truck, Bradley Morris, that k and filters cut, he came from 16th place up to fourth and is challenging CJ Greaves, who is one of the most Dominant racers on the circuit right now. As they come over the big catapult, flying down the hill. Some huge speed around this tight course as we look at CJ up the inside. Is he going to be able to get around Hart? Oh, just couldn't hold it, but Hart, I mean, Hart has CJ all over the back of him, and Hart nose high coming over that jump into turn one. Oh, CJ tries to do the up and under. They touch again. But not able to get it done yet. Bradley Morris just looking for an opportunity to hopefully get around these guys. Look at them swapping through these rollers as they charge through there on the throttle. Oh, we see more issues from Jesse Johnson, younger brother of Jimmy, getting tangled with one of the other drivers out there. And look at this. These guys, you could throw a blanket of these front, what's it, six, seven, eight now, so tightly packed. And again, Kyle Hart, the red and white truck holding off the black truck. Oh. CJ Greaves and Oh, a bump there. Oh, Morris. It looked like uh, Keegan just said, hey, bro, I'm coming through. Move. As they still side by side. Flying through the air together, Bradley Morris and Keegan Kincaid. And they are challenging. And it's absolutely unbelievable that so far, Jarrett Brooks has been having a great race. I can't believe we haven't had more crashes. So look at that breaking bump. You see how it upset the, uh, the outside truck there of um, I believe that is Doug Mitag. He there got a little kicked off that kicker coming in the turn, ran a little bit wide and opened the door up. Oh, look at that. Kincaid getting a little bit on two wheels. These guys pushing the envelope. Oh, and I think that was Keegan Kincaid, maybe with a little help from Bradley Morris, but he's now on his side. Full course yellow is out. What do we say, Tess? This racing, there's no give or take. 
That's the 44 truck there of Brad Lovell. And one of our top racers now is gonna have to go to the back of the pack if he can restart. So here we see in the corner. Wow. Oh, Bradley Morris gets sideways. And Brad Lovell was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Just, just nothing but just pure bad luck there. Look at Morris here. He bicycles again. Did the same thing yesterday. Corrects it and, well, the rest is history. So Bradley Morris pushing this car sideways. Pro Lights will continue when we come back to talk the Off-Road Championship. Welcome back everyone. Pro Lights coming back to the green flag. This will be a green, white, checkered finish. And Jared Brooks again in the 77 is going to try and hold off the rest of that field. He has run an absolutely amazing race to this point. He has been really solid out front, not worrying about what's going on around him, doing his own thing. And that seems to be working. Just like CJ likes this, coming into the inside. Watch him, he'll get on the brakes real hard and hope to keep a tight line. Look at these guys. Oh, wow. Trying Everybody. to make it three wide. So there you see the 77 Ooh. Jarrett Brooks. He is being chased down hard, though. And Kyle Hart looks like he's trying to take a look. Kyle Hart's right there. Look at CJ and Keegan going at it. These two guys seem to be almost inseparable at this point. Now remember yesterday, the number 77, he had his entire hood up in the windshield. He couldn't see anything for about half a lap and still took third. Now he's coming to the white flag, one lap left in this Pro Lights division. Can he hang on? Jared from 77 in the lead. If he hangs on, this will be his first ever career win in this class. Oh, we see it. <laughs> a driver in the background there. And we have a truck upside down. Not sure if we're going to have the full course yellow. Maybe with it being the white flag, they'll run it on. Full course oh. yellow. They are taking no precautions as trucks are still coming. And the first thing about this is safety. Uh, let's take a look at what happened here. Came in just really aggressive. Tried to go underneath. You know, there's two trucks. I think one of them, Bradley Morris, and got it a little sideways. And that was it. And. Caution is out, but this means that the next flag will be the checkered flag, and it will be for the number 77 of Jared Brooks, his first victory in torque racing. Checkered and yellow for Brooks. Looks like Hart takes second, and CJ Greaves takes third. Wow. Pro light division is complete, but we have Pro 2 still coming up on torque from Prim Nevada. Join us. Welcome back, everyone, to Torque Round 2 from awesome Prim Nevada. And there you have the winner, number 77, Jarrett Brooks, in our Pro Lights division. His first win in Torque Racing. And Christy Lee is about to catch up with him. Jared, congratulations. Really strong race out there. You kept it even after the cautionary flag. Very, very great performance from you. Your first career torque win ever. Congratulations. What's going through your head right now? Oh, I'm so awesome. My uh, Cooper tires are hooking up out there, and I'm just super pumped, you know. My whole team has just been, we've just been working really hard the off season. It's cool to come out here and finally get on the box both days. And uh, I just want to thank Cooper, uh, Maxima, Fox Shocks. RC10, Walker Evans, uh, COD, and my whole family. My whole family came out here. It's like, 
to get a, to get two podiums and get a win. I'm so pumped. Uh, thank you, everyone. And a uh, very thankful young man. He put in just an awesome race right from the front. Kyle Hart, though, holding off the charge of C.J. Greaves to take that second place, and C.J. rounding out the podium today. A lot of great racing there from our top 10 drivers. <laughs> And coming up next, the Pro 2 division. We switch from 400 to 900 horsepower. And this guy, Chad Horde, who had an unbelievable run yesterday in the Pro 2 class. And right now, Tony Bockhoven has caught up with him. Chad Horde had an amazing day yesterday. He bested his 2013 victory score with one. Chad, you're off to a great start this morning. You told me you are really confident in this truck this year. Yeah, we are. You know, we did a bunch of work in the off season, uh, did a bunch of testing, and it's all paid off. And first stop of the season here, we got a win already, and we're just we're going to look out to back it up. He's on his way to back it up, and another guy that's out there right now watching is with Christy. He had a rough day yesterday, Christy. All right, Lion Deck Jr., great to see you here today. Definitely had a tough break during racing yesterday. Talk us through that crash. What happened? Um, just on that restart, everyone's really close together, and I think, uh, you know, Mike and I were battling for fourth there. And I think it was just one of those racing incidents. You know, we both came off the j jump a little bit sideways, and I just happened to be just enough in front of him to where when we hit midair, it turned me, and um, then I went for a wild ride. But I definitely, I'm bummed, you know, for my sponsors, Gunk, Cooper Tire, Genius Tools, all came out here to support me, and uh, could have had a podium finish last uh, yesterday, and now I'm, you know, a little bit loopy on pain meds uh, with a broken collarbone. So I'm bummed on, on, on how it turned out, but, uh, definitely glad we had the speed there, so that's good. Uh, it's unbelievable that Ari Leindyke could go through a crash like that and come back here today, and maybe we'll try to get him in the booth to join us. Coming up, Pro 2 Racing for Prim Nevada. Don't miss it. Welcome back, everyone, to Torque, the Off-Road Championships. We're in Prim, Nevada, just south of Las Vegas, getting ready for our Pro 2 racing. And you can see Pro 2 guys already on course, getting warmed up. And this is exciting as it comes, and we saw some great racing here yesterday. As we take a look at these machines, as we see from the Pro Lights, now we go to Pro 2, double the horsepower. A lot more suspension travel, but we also add some weight. So these trucks are heavier, not able to accelerate and decelerate quite as quickly. But with that extra horsepower, these trucks are mighty fast. Well, great racing we saw in round one yesterday. Uh, one guy we will not see in round two, Ari Leindyke, is sitting in the booth next to us because of this, Ari. Yeah, basically yesterday got crossed up, you know, trying to pass Jenkins for fourth after a restart. And took a bad fall and now uh, broke the collarbone. So I'm bummed I can't be out there today, guys. But unbelievable, what is going through your mind when this happens to you? I mean, I knew it was, it was gonna go wrong because I was a little bit ahead of Jenkins. I, I figured we could hit bank doors, but um, I knew as soon as we touched that it was gonna go bad. And uh, the steering shaft actually broke, the steering wheel broke off in my hands and I couldn't hold my arms. Um, and basically, I think one of my arms just sort of got near the window net broke my collarbone. So that was Ari's ride home yesterday, but we're pleased to have him in the booth here today. Yesterday, CJ Greaves also, Grant, just having a terrible day. Well, we saw him win the Pro Lights, but coming to Pro 2, he had a mechanical in qualifying and the same thing in the race, a spindle broke. They hope to have this sorted out. We'll find out now if they do. Green flag racing, Jeff Seifert will lead them out. 
Alongside the number 47 and Mike Jenkins. Here we go, Pro 2 racing on course. Pro 2's invert the top four. So our winner from yesterday, Chad Horn, on the outside of the second row. Come the first turn, Jenkins running a little bit wide. Jenkins trying to get squared off and get that speed, but Seifert so far in that sack team machine is holding on to the lead. Johnson's got a little smoke if you're noticing right now in the woods in the back of this your screen, the uh, Austin Barna truck. Oh, oh wow, whoa. nice move there for Jenkins. A little slide job action there, but look who comes and takes the lead. Yesterday's winner, Chad Horn, really in the front. Great shot there, the onboard shot from Mike Jenkins' truck. And unfortunately, while everyone was scrambling, Chad Horde managed to get his way through, and he is now in the lead. Bad news for everybody else. Ari, right, tell us what it's like with this jump. We've seen the wind catch you guys, and now Fauci going. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's full throttle. You're going off there. If, if the wind's headed in a certain direction, it really sails the truck nicely. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's awesome to take that jump at full speed. But we're looking at Johnson right now. I see him struggling. There's some smoke coming out of the back of the truck. Who knows what it could be, but it can't be great. <laughs> Anything smoky, in yeah. my opinion, on the track's not good. You see blue smoke on off-road, that means it's, you know, it's it could be terminal. So we'll see if he can hold on to it and see how long that truck lasts. You see these guys, they've thrown some water down. They have to do this to keep the moisture in the ground, keep the dust down, mainly for visibility as well as they need some traction. But right now, it looks like these guys are sliding around. Yeah, I mean, it's, when it's wet like this, it is super hard to control the truck. You're seeing Jenkins struggle a little bit um, in turn two. And uh, as, when it dries out, the track gets more and more grip. And then it sort of crosses over. And then at the end of the race, it gets slick again. So right now, the conditions coming to the drivers, it's going to get better and better about up until the caution. So it goes from a wet slick to prime to a dry slick in the end. Exactly, yep. So right now, Chad Hort still leading us out. Marty Hart behind him. And there is the Boss Snowplow machine of number nine, Chad Hort. Had a great race yesterday, and I think he's going to be very happy right now leading out this race. It looks like from the moment he offloaded that truck, he looked like he was dialed in, Ooh. set, ready to go. Oh, we see some contact. And there, Johnson Jared now Johnson. with the problem. And it looks like. Like you He's said, got a fire underneath the truck right there. Ari, you were saying we saw some smoke. I wonder if that is something to do with that smoke that's keeping him out of this race right now. CJ Green is making some moves up here. Looks like that spindle is definitely holding up, so he's moving up through the field. Well, it held up longer than it did yesterday yeah, in that's both sections, so at least we know they're going in the right direction. Let's hope that this can hold on for the remainder of this race. CJ Green is trying to keep the power up around the outside of Seifert. Two oh. completely different lines, and we see there they came out almost side by side. But Ari, I'm sure you could elaborate to this. The inside obviously a shorter way around, but the right. outside, you see the guys running wide, looks like they carry more momentum. Yeah, they just carry so much more momentum coming off the corner, and you saw the difference there between CJ, and he just has so much more drive, and, that, and that's why you want to really use that cushion and go where the soft dirt is. Oh, we have a truck off the side of the course there. Wow. A lot of chaos going on in this Pro 2 class right now. Chad Horde, though, still comfortably in the lead. And Chad Horde is our VP power moves of the day. Take a look at this. Chad Horde coming up the inside to claim the lead, and he is leading this Pro 2 class right now. Will he keep the lead? Find out when we come back.
Welcome back, everyone, to Torque Round 2 from Prim, Nevada. Pro 2 is on the line. We've already seen some crazy driving so far. Well, we see coming to the turn, yeah, Marty Hart. It looks like he just runs it in a little bit deep, <laughs> blows over that K rail, and just grabs a foot full of throttle there <laughs> as he hoofs it around the outside to get back on the track. But that's a racer's mentality. Just looks like he overcooks it, wasn't able to get that truck set up. So we're heading into the green flag. Tess Sewell, Grant Langston, and Ari Leindyke Jr. in the booth with us. Boys getting sideways before the green flag was even out. Yeah, CJ looking here on the outside. Cross under, maybe. Oh, he does a little rubbing. This is the same spot, Ari, that you went yeah. over yesterday, <laughs> but they keep it clean as they, they just rub it. They bump into each other. But Chad now has the inside. Can he hold it off? Look for CJ to go underneath him right here. A little up and under. Move. Great battle here for first. Oh, and they both oh. share that same line, and they cross oh. over once again. Chad Hoard really holding his own here. Chad doesn't seem to be phased by much at the moment. And I think confidence breeds confidence, yeah, right? Totally. He had such a great race yesterday. And, uh, definitely showing. Oh, you hear that truck with the rev limit over there. With that, when the front end was down, the guys seemed to get on the throttle and pick the front end up. Uh, Chad Hoard in the lead in this race right now in that red truck. And for more on Chad, let's check in with Tony Bockhoven. You guys, you talked about his confidence, and he told me this morning that they didn't build a new truck this winter. They struggled a little bit last year, so they worked on some of those details, and he really feels like with the changes they made over the winter to the current truck that he's racing right now, he's really got something for the Greaves team this year. And that he sure does, because he has looked solid. And, and, and that's the thing sometimes, you don't have to go and reinvent the wheel. They just went and fine-tuned and dialed things in, and I think Ari, as a racer, you can attest that that is critical to know exactly what that truck's going to do. Yeah, I mean, uh, first of all, through the whoops, the truck looks amazing. Uh, it, it flies nice, flies nice, goes high, you can control that to the truck in the air. And so the truck's balance is really good. Um, CJ looks to be fast and is catching him, but you know, catching a guy is one thing, passing him is another. And that is so true. So this is Chad Horde and CJ Greaves battling for the lead. And these Pro 2 trucks, 900 horsepower of fury. And what does that sound like? Well, turn up your TVs and listen to the Magnaflow sounds of torque. for CJ right here, a lot of grip on the outside. And he's gonna carry that momentum down the straightaway. He is on the outside, but he clears him before they get to turn one. Fantastic pass, and how wicked do these trucks sound when they're screaming. Uh, Chad Hort still trying to find that line, but CJ had the line coming in through four there to the start finish, and it really looked like Hort was working so hard trying to hold on. Chad Hall keeping a tidal line there, using the other option through that split lane. Basically, obviously trying to stay out of the roost at this point. Yeah, I think right now he's just, you know, doing a good job of checking CJ's lines, seeing where he can set him up. Uh, Horde looks to be battling back here. I wouldn't count him out. And then that turn there, I saw that's what upset Chad's car last time. It seems like he hits that rut and it really digs the car in, where CJ looked like he almost cleared and carried a little more momentum. I wonder if Chad will be able to pick up on that now that he's able to watch CJ's lines. Look at CJ kind of go low here, kind of block forward a little bit. Let's see if Ford can set him up high low like CJ did to him. Good low line for, the, for Ford. And CJ's got the momentum. Yep, came out pretty much even, but now just under three laps to go as we see some of that body work coming off the 33 truck, but that ain't gonna slow him down, it's just body work. And right now, with three laps to go, it's all about really just analyzing the guy in front of you, seeing where you're better than him. Well, here's the question for you, Ari. You, you understand this. When the guy in front of you is spraying up roost like this, you're Chad Hort. How much 
vision do you actually get? How well can you see? I mean, he's got so much experience underneath his belt. You know, I don't think the roost is really going to slow him down. But right there, you see he hooked a little bit. And right now, he's really got to push it because if he lets CJ leg it a little bit, it's not going to be able to get him back. Would you agree, as we start the final two laps of this race, would you agree that maybe it's not so much the roost, but not being able to see whether the ruts and the holes and that are developing, because you've got a truck basically block your vision? Yeah, exactly. A lot of times, if you have a guy, if you're too close to somebody, you can't take the line that you want to take. So right now, you're looking at more taking this inside where CJ has been taking this outside, but now it's sort of adapting to CJ's line because maybe it's working better for him as well. So this is really tough. The, the track right now is beat up. There isn't much grip out there. And everyone's sort of battling for that same piece of dirt that's soft that you get the traction off of. Well, it's almost a catch-22 because you've got to be close to make a pass. So, you know, you pretty much have to eat the roost. And sometimes you have to follow the same guy. This is the foul line sweeping around the outside. You have to take it. Exactly. These guys are right right now. He's right in tow, but he's close enough. He can mount an attack. Last lap. White flag is flying. CJ Greaves in the black truck in the lead. Chad Horton, that boss snowplow machine, just all over the back of CJ Greaves. And Chad Horton looks to me like he does not have a lot of patience. And why would you? One lap to go as he just smashes that body. Look for him coming in here. Tries to do a slide job on the inside, but CJ keeps the momentum. Now they split those lanes. He's close enough, guys. This may be his last opportunity. If CJ does not blow that last turn, this may be it. But well, watch this rut here that's catching these guys out. Oh, and Chad. CJ seems to get through that rut just a little bit cleaner, which helps him carry the momentum down this fast straight away. So here we go. They're over the big jump. And CJ Greaves is going to hang on for this one. He had a terrible day yesterday in round one. But today, redemption, checkered flag. CJ Greaves wins Pro 2. Great drive from Chad Hort. He was right there, just came up a little short. Yeah, he did great. So CJ Greaves claims Pro 2. Awesome driving here today in Prim. Pro 4 will be coming up when we return. Torque, the off-road championship on NBCSN, is brought to you by CAT. The Torque Racing Series depends on CAT machines at each tour stop. Do what Torque does and choose CAT equipment for your next job. And by Husqvarna, the world's largest producer of outdoor power equipment. Pro 2 winner here in Prim, CJ Greaves. A very happy man after the trials of the last couple of days, and Christy Lee caught up with him. CJ, you definitely found the results you were looking for today. When I caught up with your crew earlier, they were definitely burning the midnight oil, trying to get your truck ready and prepared, and to give you a winning truck today, and that definitely happened. Congratulations. Yeah, first off, my mechanic on this Pro 2, Devin, we had two mishaps. I know it really got him down. This one goes out to him. He got this truck working awesome. We started in the back, dead last today, worked our way all the way up to first. Let's talk about the race and the battle with Chad Horde. He definitely gave you a run for your money. You made that pass for the lead and kept it for the win. Yeah, Chad's been running strong all weekend here, and we've been right there with him. And he opened the door up, so I took it, and uh, we went door to door from here on out. But I couldn't have done it without all my sponsors, Monster Toyota, Maxxis, uh, Fox Shocks, MagnaFlow, all you guys for coming out, Method, Team Associated, everyone. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Christy. A great result there after a rough weekend for CJ Greaves. What a way to remount. DNF yesterday comes back with a win and a solid weekend for Chad Horde. A first and a second. He will retain the points lead. Nice podium position there for Patrick Clark. Pro 2 in the books. That means the Pro 4s will be up on the line. And yesterday, a great day for Adrian Cheney. Well, Cheney comes in this turn and he kind of overcooks it, creates a bit of a stack up. 
But then later in the race, this last lap pass of Johnny Greaves, who had tumbled over, no body work. But Adrian Cheney, the wild man, takes round one here in Prim Nevada. So Cheney there yesterday in round one takes the victory. And he is with Tony Balkoven. Indeed, he did take the victory. The wild man, Adrian Cheney, you had this place on their feet yesterday. All of 2013, you tried so hard to get your victory lane. Yesterday, you did it. What a start to your season. Thank you. Yeah, it was a very difficult race, but a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, that never say die attitude, just pushing, 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 finally paid off. A lot of the bad luck that happens to me finally broke. And, uh, yeah, I had some good luck. You and uh, Johnny Greaves really battled out before his engine laid down. You guys had a fierce battle. Take us through a couple of those laps. Uh, you know, I, was, I felt like I was, uh, I was chasing Johnny down. I mean, he wasn't making time on me. I wasn't making that much time on him. He did have a bobble coming out of turn two. He left the track, got back on. And then by the, at that time, I was right up on him. And then uh, it was kind of even. And then I think on the last lap, his engine maybe have started to go because the pass I uh, had on him was pretty easy. Adrian Cheney went to victory lane, guys. Oh, thanks, Tony. The wild man looking very calm, cool, and collected right now. But that will change when the green flag flies. And that will happen when we come back. Torque Racing coming up. Welcome back everyone to round number two of Torque, the off-road championship here from Prim, Nevada. The Pro 4s are on the truck, 900 horsepower delivered to all four wheels. Johnny Greaves, yesterday wasn't exactly the day he wanted. <laughs> yesterday was went a little bit different for Johnny Greaves. You see him coming up the inside of Scott Douglas, trying to go for the lead, but he overdrives it with that right hander. He tips over. Adrian Cheney gets caught up. And here you see Johnny Greaves trying to make his way through the pack, just not letting up that throttle. Blasting hay bales, doing whatever he can to get near the front. Was still able to come through with a second place finish with no body work left on that truck. Absolutely unbelievable. He still took second. The onboard today will be on the number seven truck of Scott Douglas, who's sitting in the back of the pack right now. Here we go, green flag racing in our Pro 4s. Well, Scott Douglas might be at the back now, but I don't expect him to stay there. He had a mechanical just that kept him out of the race. As we come into the first turn of the scene, number 10, Ross Hook with the lead. As the rest of the Pro 4s come behind him, and Johnny Greaves already he's running the wow. same line as his son. Do you think they spot for each other, Johnny, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> Johnny Greaves is coming fast. Look at this pass he already made on Hook on the inside. He does a perfect slide job, takes the line away so there's no counterattack. And look who's out in front, Johnny Greaves, with his body work today and on all four wheels. But behind him, we see Mark Jenkins there the tracks his track he now has gotten a second has he got anything for johnny today well mark jenkins again was just pushed out of this race a little bit yesterday from a, a little bit of a mistake oh, johnny greaves though leading this is the way we expect johnny greaves to do his racing he likes getting out front getting in that clear air and then just powering you know making his marks through every single turn well they, you've got to imagine too though these guys have to be smart when you say powering it You've got to be have good throttle control, especially at the beginning of these races. You see a little bit of moisture on the track. So these trucks with so much horsepower, you get on the throttle too hard exiting this turn, and you'll just fly off the track. You've got to get straightened up. Johnny, the best in the business at this. So Johnny Greaves in the lead, and to check in for more on Johnny, let's go down to Tony Barkoven. Well, guys, don't forget, Johnny Greaves is one of the few guys running a manual transmission here. Johnny's told me before that early in the race when the track's really heavy and muddy like it is right now, it allows him to grab a better gear to get off the corner quicker. So when we see him pull away so quickly like we did in that right-hand turn, that could be part of the reason why. 
And that's so true because he could short shift, put in a, in a taller gear, labor that motor, because with 900 horsepower under that hood, he's going to be just fine as we see the wild man, the winner from round one, Adrian Cheney, trying to set his sights on the top two of Mark Jenkins and Johnny Greaves as he comes in this roller section. This wild man not scared through there, but very stable right now. And again, four-wheel drive trucks. That means you can power all of the way around the corner and delivering 900 horsepower. Well, you can have 900 horsepower, but if you put your foot to the ground when it's slick, all you're going to do is dig a trench and go nowhere in a hurry. But Adrian Cheney looks like he's finding his groove now, starting to put pressure on Mark Jenkins as they come over the catapult. So there, the black truck coming through now, that is Johnny Greaves, the red truck of Mark Jenkins, and the bright orange truck of the wild man, Adrian Cheney, working hard on the back of Mark Jenkins. And I have to reiterate, TV doesn't even justify the speed that these guys come by you, and the roost, the noise, the intensity. And you see the ruts developing, you see the lower right-hand side of the truck really getting buried, and you see the dirt coming out of the side of Adrian Cheney's Rear wheel there, and you see a little bit of the body weight flying off as he goes up the oh! inside. Oh, trying hard, and somehow they, they didn't split lanes. make contact. How's the split lane going to work out? Side by side. But now Jenkins has the, oh, and Cheney flat lands. You see the truck bottom out, the dirt coming from underneath that. So unable to make the pass there, but he looks like he wants to get around because he can see Johnny Greaves starting to stretch it out ahead of them. Uh, the question I have for you here is, Chenny may be pushing a little too hard and risking some damage to that truck? Well, if we know Adrian Chenny, that doesn't cross his mind. He's going to run it till it breaks. Look at the interval between Johnny Grease now as we see Jenkins coming over, still in second, followed by Chenny. Chenny applying the pressure. So you know that if Mark Jenkins makes one slight mistake, Chenny is going to be right there to capitalize. And if either of those two make a mistake, that Looks like we've now got a contender coming up in fourth place. We'll have to check. It looked like it was Mike Jenkins. So we got the Jenkins boys out there trying to both put themselves on the podium, but Adrian Cheney at this point will have nothing to do with that. Will he dive at the inside and do another slide job? Here he comes. Oh, oh Cheney, look at that. Adrian Cheney never been afraid to pitch that thing in before he gets to the turn. I think sometimes the drivers behind him see his face when he comes in the corner. He flicks that thing so hard. Well, just overdriving that thing, pushed himself out of the corner and opened the door for the second of the Jenkins brothers, Mike Jenkins. The number 47 goes through. So now Cheney is going to have to work even harder to try and get back through to Johnny Greaves. So working lap six now. Basically, at the end of this lap, we should be seeing the uh, mandatory caution, which is good news for the second, third, fourth place trucks, gives them a chance to bunch up and have the leader right in front of them before those last seven laps. So there comes Chenny. He's taking that option line, trying to work through past Mike Jenkins, but that mistake could be costly. As you see, Adrian Cheney, you see he commits. He goes from the outside to the inside, and he flicks it in, but you can see there just a little too much. He gets on the binders. Fortunately, he didn't tip over. Didn't actually lose a whole lot of ground, considering it was a pretty sizable mistake. So there's Cheney. That orange truck is now trying to find his way first past Mike Jenkins in the number 47 truck, and then he'll still have to get past Mark Jenkins before getting to Johnny Greaves. And Greaves has an almost five second lead on Mark Jenkins. Oh, look at this. Cheney knows he's got to get by before the end of the lap when that mandatory caution comes by. Let's see what he does. He's going to go outside wide to cut up the inside. Carry that momentum out. He goes to the low line. What's going to happen here? They split lanes once again. Mark Jenkins, sorry, with the inside. Mike Jenkins, that is. Too many Jenkins out there. But oh, Jenny up this the Oh, oh bicycles see, it. He clipped the inside, you know, that little banking there. Got on two wheels. About. Never let off the throttle. So we're coming round now to the competition caution, the red and yellow way. And we will be bunching up all of our trucks now, ready for a restart. Competition caution underway. 
Wow. Let's check in with Tony Buckhoven. Well, guys, I talked to Mike Jenkins this morning, and he was telling me about the tire change when they went to Cooper Tires this year. The biggest reason, he said the lugs are much taller on the top of the tire than what they've ever run before. The reason that's important is, like right now, the line they're running, the track is starting to take rubber, so you're getting that shiny black blue groove on the racetrack where there's no cushion to lean against. So they need more tire to lean against, which has allowed them to really drive harder into the corner and yet have more forward bite coming off the turn. Let's take a look at our mid-race standings. Johnny Greaves in that number 22 in the lead over Mark Jenkins, then Mike Jenkins, and Adrian Chenny, who is about the hardest working man in show business out there trying to find his way past the Jenkins clan. As we see <laughs> Kathy Greaves, look at those suns out, guns out, cheering on the, her husband who's leading this race as they take the green. So clean going into turn one so far, and Jenny still looking for a way through. Scott Douglas now, though, is working the back of Adrian Cheney's machine, so. And Cheney didn't have to worry about that before that mandatory caution. But if you're Scott Douglas right now, you're looking at this going, I can see the front four in front of me as we see these guys battling for the lead. Another split lane. Johnny Greaves and Mark Jenkins going at it. The Greaves has the inside and the line. And Cheney has got past Mike Jenkins. He has got Scott Douglas right behind him. So Cheney moves up into third place. So right now, Greaves, Mark Jenkins, Adrian Cheney, and then Scott Douglas. You're looking back from Scott Douglas's truck at Mike Jenkins. At least now we see some people behind old Scott Douglas. In that uh, pre-race show we saw there, no one behind him when he lined up, but he's making his way through, and he is right in the mix of this. Look at these guys. And you can see the sunlight there coming into that camera as they go up that front stretch. When they come down the back stretch and down this rhythm section, the sun is getting low, and it's getting directly in your eyes. Well, if you're a torque racing truck driver, vision is something that you just learn to deal with very little of because like we said vision is at a minimal on these things a lot of it on feeling for these guys just talent so there's scott luck douglas going through and then that is mike jenkins but you can see adrian cheney is looking for the open door right behind mark jenkins again but johnny greaves look at how clean that truck is that truck looks clean, a lot like his driving, just solid, smooth, but not able to get away because Mark Jenkins, Adrian Cheney, and now Scott Douglas. We got a freight train going here. Mike Jenkins still hanging in there, so still all racing, and still anything can happen. These guys are so close. Laps, though, are winding down, and Cheney knows he's going to have to try and make some risky moves to get past Jenkins if he has a hope oh! of chasing him. Wow! Oh! Huge mistake there for Mark Jenkins. And that may have done some damage as he hit that K-rail head on. We've Currently, seen issues in that corner before, Tess. Well, we saw definitely in the Pro 2 some problems, and right now he is off the track. We'll have to find out if the caution is going to come out. He is on the inside of the track. Let's take a look at what happened here, Grant. Well, we've seen this. The guys come in this turn too hard and they have to try and flick it in. And what happens when you bicycle? You have to counter steer and you had to turn straight in that K rail. Watch this. Better angle. Look, going over, counter steer, hit the brakes, nowhere to go. Great save, though. That could have been a, a lot worse. <laughs> Unbelievable what these trucks will do. 18 inches of travel in the oh. front, 20 inches in the back. Absolutely incredible. So off the track goes Mark Jenkins, but Pro 4 Racing continues. Be sure to join us for the epic conclusion here from Torque. Welcome back, everyone. Pro 4 is on the track here in Prim at Torque, the Off-Road Championship Round 2. Johnny Greaves is leading Adrian Cheney because Mark Jenkins just jumped over the K-rail and put him out of the race. And now Cheney gets his chance to work on Johnny Greaves again. Well, we arguably have our top three guys that we predicted for this race running one, two, and three. Let's see how this turns out. This, to me, is a shootout to the finish. Who's going to be aggressive? Who's going to hold it together? As we see, they start switching up lines. Oh, look at the speed of that orange truck of Adrian Wildman Cheney on the outside. And the oh. white truck, the Amsoil truck of Scott Douglas now is trying to find a way. But can Cheney get the line here? 
Cheney's oh, got Johnny many times. Oh, McGreeves was just able to clear him. Close that inside line away from Cheney as Cheney clips that little inside back again. We saw Scott Douglas make a slight mistake off the landing, lost a couple truck lengths. Let's see if he can make that back up and put this into a three-way battle for the lead. And remember, in the last round, round one, Adrian Cheney passed on the last lap. He went past Johnny Greaves to take the win. And Johnny Greaves remembers that it is fresh in his mind. So he is not going to let that orange truck do the same if he can help it. Well, as we now with less than four laps to go, as we saw at round one, Cheney able to make the pass on the last lap. Actually, the penultimate corner, a beautiful textbook pass. But Johnny Greaves, he's too smart. You know he's not going to allow that to happen again. But what it's all about now is, again, hitting your marks, making sure you drive as cleanly as possible. And for Johnny Greaves, that means staying on that fast racing line every lap. Coming over the catapult. These guys jumping further down the hill. Look at that. In excess of 200 feet. These guys are absolutely flying. As we see, Johnny Greaves running the sort of outside, almost up against the K rails, whereas Adrian Cheney hugging that inside, getting the wheels on that blue group. So close, he's actually almost hitting those hay bales on the inside. Oh, driving deep there, Greaves on the inside. Oh, and the back of the screen there, we see Mike Jenkins do the bicycle. I think he was able to save it. These guys, you know they're pushing so hard, these trucks. They have four wheels, but half the time they're using only two or three around these corners. So you're looking at Johnny Greaves, our current leader in the number 22 Monster Toyota. Behind him, Adrian Wildman Cheney. And, and they've also now gapped Scott Douglas just a little bit. So are we looking at a repeat of yesterday? Is Cheney going to be able to shut that little gap down? Look at Johnny running that outside line, just that truck screaming. See Johnny with a red background behind his number 22. That lets us know he is also the defending champion in this class. And as he's trying to show right now why he's the champion. Listen to the sound of those engines screaming. Makes my hair stand up. Johnny Greaves trying to hold off Adrian Cheney in these final few laps. It was one and two Cheney Greaves yesterday. Greaves wants it to be one and two Greaves Cheney today. This was the corner where Adrian Cheney was able to make that pass on the last lap. This is the second last time they're going through this turn for the race. But Cheney has to close up a few more track lengths because they are coming to the white flag. Oh, there you saw how far Cheney jumped compared to Greaves. Greaves put his tires down, got the power down to the ground sooner. And that is where you gain precious time. White flag, one left remains. Cheney is maintaining that gap, but he's still not close enough as we see Kathy looking on and her husband, Johnny Greaves, probably with sweaty palms that we all have. And Cheney pushing so hard. He's trying everything. He knows it's the last lap. Amazing the amount of space that Greaves and Cheney have put on the rest of the field now. But Johnny Greaves is driving an almost perfect race so far. Got to take your hat off to this guy, man. He's been, he's had an interesting weekend. And we've seen him from the back to the front, remounted for a solid second position. But if things stay the way they are right now, you'll find him and Adrian Cheney in a tie for the lead off the first two rounds. Final corner. Here we go. Johnny Greaves comes around turn four and heads for home. And he will take the win in Prim, Nevada. Adrian Cheney takes Johnny second. <laughs> and as Kathy Greaves says, number one for Johnny Greaves. Great racing here in Pro 4. We'll check in with our winner when we return here to Torque Racing from Prim, Nevada.
Torque, the off-road championship on NBCSN, is brought to you by Amsoil. For any engine, buy now at amsoil.com. By Magnaflow. Find your next exhaust at magnaflow.com. By GoPro, the world's most versatile camera. And by Nitto Tire, fueled by enthusiasts. Great Pro 4 race here in Prim this afternoon, and an awesome win for Johnny Greaves. And Christy Lee is catching up with Johnny. Johnny, outstanding performance out there in the number 22 Monster Energy Toyota. Back on top today, you were able to keep Adrian Senny at bay. Tell us about your race. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I was a little worried in the beginning because both those guys up in front that start on the pole have never started there before, you know, and, and, and it, that makes it hard to decide where to go. But uh, I choose the right spot, I guess. I got under uh, under on the first corner and then uh, took the lead on the second corner where I blew it yesterday, you know, so uh, that was... Uh, that was sweet revenge on my part, and um, from there I just, you know, I, I had CJ coaching me, and I got a little out of control in the first couple laps. The track was slick, so uh, he calmed me down, and um, man, we hooked them Max's tires up with that Toyota power and put the monster power to it, and uh, smooth sailing from there. Yeah. And once Johnny got past that pack, he never looked back. Take a look at those Pro 4 results. As we see, Adrian Cheney, yesterday's winner, gets second, so you know he's right up near the point. Scott Douglas, nice that he was able to finish, and not only finish, but on the podium. Mike Jenkins, Mark Kwame rounding out the top five. Yeah, and Scott Douglas' team working so hard to get that truck ready for today. Awesome racing here in Prim, and our GoPro be a hero moment. Well, it's just the shots from those GoPro cameras we have around the track. Well. Fortunately, we have GoPros because people wouldn't be able to stand there with the camera because these rocks pelt you. These cameras, indestructible, giving us great Scott views Douglas of this great racing. And that look back from Scott Douglas, who took third today. And let's go to the points now because the championship, two rounds in, Chenny and Greaves tied for first place. Simple math, a first and a second will give you 40 second points, 25 for a win, 22 for second. So Cheney and Greaves, trade positions from Saturday and Sunday. Mark Kwame, a surprise on the podium. Only 11 points back. Scott Douglas right back in the mix, followed by Hook, Jenkins, and Mark Jenkins. So a great day for Jarrett Brooks in Pro Light, CJ Greaves in Pro 2, and Johnny Greaves in Pro 4. The Torque Tour now rolls into Charlotte, North Carolina for the next two rounds. You've got to be sure to join us there in Charlotte for more of this epic racing. For Grant Langston, Tony Bachhoven, and Christy Lee, I am Tess Sewell. Thank you for joining us here in Prim. More great racing from Torque. Next time we come back, be sure to join us.